Hi everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to talk about the rationale behind prescribing puberty blockers. So first off, none of this is meant to be taken as medical advice. If you are looking to start a new medication or therapy of some kind, you need to talk to your doctor um, who understands your specific case. Uh, I am starting to see patients in August, so if you do come see me in the clinic, you can take my advice at that time, um, but don't view any of these videos as medical advice. Um, so why would we prescribe puberty blockers? Um, well, there are lots of reasons to prescribe drugs at all. And of course, drugs are meant to have a therapeutic benefit. Obviously, if a drug isn't going to benefit you in any way, there's no reason to prescribe it. Or if a drug is going to be more harmful, then there is, of course, is no reason uh, to prescribe it. So we're going to talk about what kind of things I would think about before I would prescribe somebody a puberty blocker. So one of the first reasons that comes to mind uh, is that it can reduce dysphoria. Obviously, uh, because one of the main goals of any treatment for transgender people is to reduce gender dysphoria. And a lot of times in puberty, you're getting that surge of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And of course, that might lead to a worsened dysphoria in puberty. And so by blocking puberty, we can alleviate a lot of this uh, dysphoria that comes with pubertal development. What else? Um, of course, puberty comes with a lot of secondary sex characteristics. And so in shutting down puberty, we can prevent a lot of these from developing. So when I say secondary sexual characteristics, um, we're talking about like voice deepening. So in puberty, um, for people who have a lot of testosterone, their voice is going to be deeper. And this is an irreversible side effect of puberty. And so we can prevent someone's voice from becoming deeper. We can also prevent breast development. We can prevent menstruation, so menzies. And this is a highly desired effect of puberty blockers in people who are transmasculine. Hair growth, especially in what is known as male pattern hair growth, um, this can be prevented and hair growth, you may think of being as a reversible aspect of puberty, but actually it is not. And so this can be um, very dysphoria inducing in a lot of trans women because even though uh, hair growth is stimulated by testosterone and by DHT, um, even in adding estrogen, you're, you are still going to have some uh, male pattern hair growth and that is a, a partially reversible, but not completely uh, reversible aspect of puberty. So we can prevent that. What else? Another reason is clarity in gender identity. And I apologize once again for my doctor handwriting. It is what it is. But an advantage of using a puberty blocker may be in somebody who is questioning whether or not they want to go forward with their own puberty or if they want are considering starting HRT but aren't quite sure yet. And so in blocking puberty, you can slow the process down so that they have time to decide what they want out of their body. And since puberty is largely an irreversible process, you can hold them in this prepubescent pre state or initially pubescent state so that um, they can decide for themselves if they want to undergo their own puberty. And this, during this time, you would refer them to psychology uh, to undergo some mental health counseling to figure out what they want out of their transition or if they want to transition at all. Um, and a reason why this would be so beneficial, again, um, and going a little bit more into detail, is that a GNRH agonist is reversible. So if you started somebody on Luprolide and they decided that they wanted to 
go back and start their own endogenous puberty, you can stop the medication and then after six months or so, they will resume their normal puberty. So uh, you are not causing irreversible effects with this uh, GnRH agonist. However, if you were to start somebody on HRT, HRT is mostly irreversible. Sure, there are some effects of HRT that will go away once you stop HRT. So I'm going to put mostly irreversible. So if you were to start somebody who is questioning on HRT right away, um, you're going to get some irreversible effects of that HRT, but... Uh, if you were to instead take someone who's questioning, put them on a GnRH agonist, then if they decide that they want to go through with HRT, great. Um, you didn't lose anything there. But then also, if they want to go back and go through their uh, endogenous puberty, they can still do that. So that is a wonderful advantage of starting a puberty blocker. Also, something that needs to be con uh, considered, and this is one that might not come to mind very quickly is that you suppress endogenous development so that you can start HRT at a rate that is congruent with their age and that they can undergo a puberty that more falls in line with the people around them, their peers at school who may be going through an endogenous puberty themselves. Um, so when you start um, HRT, and I'm going to take a transmasculine individual as an example because testosterone is an example of why we would want to use this. Um, so a big factor of why people would want to transition so early is to suppress menstruation. And testosterone will suppress menstruation. That is known to be true. Um, but if you were to give testosterone at a high enough dose to suppress menstruation in someone who is assigned female, um, they're going to develop very, very rapidly and have a very quick uh, male puberty. And that's something that you don't want to have uh, that early in somebody's development. So you can use, you can use a GnRHA to um, suppress menzies while you're giving testosterone at a slower dose so that they are growing and having pubertal development that is more consistent with somebody in a pubescent stage. I'm just gonna abbreviate that. And then probably the biggest reason to use puberty blockers, and this one is generally uh, more geared towards trans women, because trans women uh, often, if they transition later in life, they have gone through an incredibly irreversible puberty. So like we said earlier, voice deepening is irreversible. Um, hair growth is mostly irreversible. Face shape changes are most are absolutely irreversible. And so trans women and trans feminine people often have to go through very painful and very extensive surgical transitions in order to present as their, uh, as the phenotype they want to present as. And so if we suppress puberty earlier on, then these irreversible aspects of puberty are not going to happen. And so they can choose to do fewer surgeries. And in fact, the surgeries that they would have had to get, like uh, facial feminization surgery, are often no longer necessary. And so you're saving people time and you're saving people a whole lot of pain. And also, uh, don't forget that these surgeries are not very accessible to most people. Uh, so people of certain areas where they don't have a physician or just people who can't afford the surgeries have ways that they can transition and don't have to spend all this money down the line for something that may not even be available to them. So we have less costly and painful transition. 
So all of these are really good reasons to start a puberty blocker. And of course, there are some reasons why not to start a puberty blocker. And I'm going to talk about those in a later video. Um, but hopefully it makes more sense now about why we would use these medications. And I hope you had a good time learning about this. So if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you all in the next one.